Hello Tampa Bay, Andrew Duncan and Robert Johnson with the Duncan Duo team here to talk to you guys today about buying a second or vacation home. Um, I can't tell you how many times a day I see an ad on Facebook, buy a home and Airbnb it. We're going to make you a millionaire buying homes and buying vacation homes and uh, it makes it look really sunshine and rainbows, but I'm here to tell you it, it really isn't. Um, buying a second or vacation home, um, while for a lot of people is the right move, I've seen people blunder it and make a lot of mistakes. So I think, uh, first and foremost, I think it's important for you to define, is it a second home or is it a vacation home? Because I think it's hard to be both. Uh, you know, for example, if you're renting it out, um, you know, you may not be able to use it when you want to. Um, you also have to follow certain rules and restrictions in a lot of associations that don't let you rent them out. Um, you know, if, if it's a second home and you're not gonna rent it out, uh, you know, the path that you take is going to be different because it's less about the money and more about your lifestyle. If you do want to rent the property out, uh, it's, it's a lot about the cash flow. What kind of money can it make? Can I legally rent it in this area? Um, what kind of management fees am I going to have? What kind of people are going to be coming through? But it is a big decision and, and I think it's very hard. I hear people say, oh, I want it to be both. And you can do that with Airbnb. Um, but there's a lot more legalities today, I think, than people realize with, with all the municipalities and the regulations in place. Well, I think just going back to even deciding to purchase a second home, it's completely different even starting at the beginning. You know, you have to have your financing lined up for different types of homes. Uh, you have to be able to, to know what you really want in mm -hmm. that property. You have to be able to be in a location that you really want to be in because this is going to be something that you're either going to, like you said, invest your money into to make money or invest your money into to enjoy. And you need to, to start that process. In the and I think it's clear to separate them. You know, I, I have an aunt, for example, that has watched HGTV um, eight hours a day <laughs> for her whole life. So she believes that she has a really strong understanding about real estate. And so she decided she was going to buy a second, a se actually a vacation home that she would occasionally Airbnb. And every point in her decision-making process was about what she did or didn't like in terms of what she was going to use at the property that nine days a year that she would actually use it instead of the money. You know, what will it rent for? What are the vacancy rates? And, and unfortunately made a really bad decision, bought a property that she loved for her nine days out of the year, but it was oversaturated, oversaturated with rentals, way oversaturated on Airbnb, couldn't make any money from it, was, was losing money hand over fist. It would have been way cheaper for her to just rent a hotel for those nine days out of the year. Uh, and in a community that isn't, doesn't have values going up, but she really liked the unit. It had cool appliances, <laughs> it had neat countertops. So l let me tell you this. Forget the aesthetics, forget you know your own love for the house, forget you living in it. It's an investment if you're going to only use it that much. You have to look at the numbers, you have to pay more attention to that. All the other stuff you can fix. You know, if, if, if the numbers work, you can fix that you don't like the counters for the nine days a year that you're going to be there. So the reality is you have to kind of separate your use for it versus the investment. And, and you have to think if you're going to majority of the time rent it out, you do really have to think about it more of an investment instead of you using it. Yeah, and I think you, again, there's different tax implications. There's different rules. I think that getting really, really involved and in knowing what the HOA rules are where you're buying, or know the county rules are that where you're buying. Yeah. Um, certain counties no in the Tampa Bay area are very, very restrictive when it comes to Airbnb, yep. and that's stuff that you know you definitely want to talk to a realtor yeah. to understand all those ins and outs. And, and in addition, don't be hesitant to to call the association and ask them. Um, you know, again. Having an Airbnb and having rental properties can become its own job. You also have to understand the time commitment that you're taking on. Do you really want to do it? Do you have time in your schedule? So, you know, it, it sounds cool to tell your friends you have a vacation or a second home or a house that you Airbnb, um, but in practicality, sometimes it's a drain on time and money, and it would have been cheaper just to, uh, to get a hotel than save your money. Uh, so, again, the numbers are what really matters when you're buying a home that you're going to use sparingly. Um, you know, if the, money, if the money does matter to you, sure, if you, if you have all the money in the world, then it doesn't matter as much. You can buy whatever you want. But for most people, that's not the case. So, thanks so much for tuning in. Make sure to check out all of our other videos on our YouTube channel. We're constantly putting out real estate content. We are at The Duncan Duo on all of our social channels. Check out our radio show every Sunday at 10 on 970 AM WFLA News. Have an awesome rest of your day.